Hello and welcome back to Turning Readers into Writers. And today I'm going to be tackling that dreaded subject of showing, not telling. It's something that we all get told again and again at every writing class we go to, every writing book that we read, but it's something we need to remind ourselves of again and again. And so today I'm going to tackle that thorny subject. Welcome to the Turning Readers into Writers podcast, where I teach beginner writers how to find the time and confidence to write their first novel. I'm your host, Emma Desi, and I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you for joining me today, because if you've been longing to write your novel for forever, this is the place to be. Are you looking for somewhere you can find practical ways of building a writing routine and gaining confidence? Do you want to be part of a safe and friendly community of like-minded writers? Well, if so, head on over to Facebook where you will find my closed group for writers who, just like you, want to write their first novel. Go to Facebook and search Turning Readers into Writers, click join and say hello. I can't wait to see you in there. So hi, as I mentioned in the introduction, this episode is going to be about showing, not telling. And the reason I want to talk about this today is I've just had the manuscript back for my latest book from my editor. And one of the biggest notes that she's been giving me in this is that I've done a lot of showing, not telling. I cannot emphasise how much I learn with every edit my book goes through. My editor is fantastic. Um, not only does she manage to be, you know, find all the positives, which is always encouraging, and she always starts with those, tells me what's working in the story, but I also love that she manages to tell me what's wrong with the story, but still in a really positive and supportive way. So I do appreciate that. Because our stories are so much part of us, we can take that as personal criticism rather than professional criticism and constructive criticism. So I work hard on that with myself. And if it's something that you struggle with, you know, uh, criticism more generally, get used to it, you know, start building your resilience in that way. Because when you come to have your book edited, you're going to need to have um, a strong stomach, because whilst there will be a lot right with your manuscript, there will undoubtedly be a a lot wrong as well. So we all need to brace ourselves for that. (laughs) But I thought I should share this with you because it's such valuable information and such a valuable reminder. As we get further down the line, we evolve from simply telling the story to wanting to tell it in a better way. We're always looking to improve the craft of our writing. And whilst I don't specifically teach about craft, I did think this would be really useful because I've just had the edits back, it's fresh in my mind, and she's made some really, really good points. So as I said, she's told me I do a lot of showing and not telling. And I think this comes about because I work very hard and think very carefully about the word choices I use um, and thinking about the emotion that my my character is going through in that moment and so I end up using a lot of ed words so I shocked embarrassed thrilled enjoyed uh, ashamed what else could be another example would be um delighted you know so I use a lot of those words and what she said to me is that that's fine to have that idea in my head I know how my character is reacting but rather than tell my audience that that's how the character is responding I need to show their behavior doing that so um, let me find an example that she gave me so an example she gave me was um, Grace was devastated by the phone message from her boyfriend so instead of saying that she was devastated we could put something like As his tinny words hung in the air, Grace sank onto the sofa, her throat tight and aching. So I I thought that was a really good example. It's not in the book. She's just 
be thrown it out there as an example of how we are in the first ep the first sentence I would be telling you that Grace was devastated by the phone message literally <laughs> telling you Grace was devastated by the phone message from her boyfriend but in the second paragraph the writer would be showing that in the behavior of the character as his tinny words hung in the air Grace sank onto the sofa her throat tight and aching so we can picture that in our heads then when we're given that this that image of what's happening we see it we can see this person listening to a message on her phone that horrible feeling when you receive bad news sinking onto the sofa um, and that tightness that comes around you know maybe you need to stop yourself crying or from shouting out loud at the at frustration so it was a really really good example that she'd given there so now that she's sort of given me a good clear example of what telling rather than showing is her next advice to me is to print out my manuscript and go through it with a big red pen <gasps> yikes um so go through it with a big red pen and pick out all those sentences and paragraphs that i have described to my reader exactly what my character is thinking because she says when you do that when you tell your reader what to think you're not giving them any room to come up with their own explanation, their own imagination, their own vision of what that person's doing. It removes the empathy because you're telling your reader what to think rather than letting them experience the, the scene that's happening. She says, you know, by keeping, by not letting your reader experience for themselves what's happening, they feel like they're being held at arm's length. From the novel there being that there's a bit of a distance put between the reader and the story that's being told so that can distance them distance the reader from the story and they don't want that they want to be in amongst it all they want to be in the action they want to be experiencing what's going on and really feel empathy for your character and want to turn the next page to find out what's happening so by showing the reader by demonstrating the behavior or response the character is experiencing rather than saying so and so felt excited or sad or ashamed what are they doing in their body language what's their voice like you know what kind of terms are they using how do they speak <clears throat> does their body language indicate they are feeling confident feeling shy feeling embarrassed whatever it might be use the body language um, are they fiddling with something for example because they don't want to um, letting out the tension that they're feeling can they look the person in the eye or are they too excited or too embarrassed or what might it be so by showing the behavior of your character rather than telling your reader what they feel that can be um, that's a, a great way of pulling your reader into the action a second tip that she gave me, so the first tip she gave me was to go through the manuscript with the red pen and highlight all those sentences or paragraphs where I have said, you know, my character felt shocked, embarrassed, excited, that kind of thing. Go through my manuscript and highlight all of those pieces in red pen. Do they need to be there is the first question I can ask myself. Have I already shown my reader that my character is feeling this way and if I have I can just take out those sentences I don't need them she then says if I have not shown my reader already that the character is feeling that way ask myself the question is that sentence or a paragraph important enough to keep in the story if it is then it's important enough to have its own not entire scene but its own dialogue probably so can i extrapolate that one sentence so and so was shocked can i extrapolate that and show that in the sentence that the conversation that's happening in the scene through her body language or her voice if it's not important enough then my editor suggests taking it out so that's quite hard to do. It's quite a hard task. And she does concede this, that in the beginning when you're starting and you're still, you know, it's a new skill that we would be learning. She does mention this is quite tricky to do. So 
urges me to be patient with myself and so I in turn would urge you to be patient with yourself um, to learn the skill go through the manuscript with the red pen is the sentence necessary have you already described already shown what's happening in the character's life if you have take the sentence out if you have not how can you show your reader what's happening how can you demonstrate that sentence in another way through behaviour and action rather than telling them so-and-so felt shock? I hope that makes sense. <laughs> I'm trying very hard to do, um, be as fluent as she is in telling me, um, especially as I can't actually give you a written e example. I can only uh, speak the example, but I hope that makes sense to you. <laughs> By doing this, she says, we will probably pull out a lot of extraneous words, words and sentences that don't need to be in there. And in some instances in my manuscript, whole paragraphs, maybe even two paragraphs can be taken out. So that can, you know, obviously reduce your word count and make your story smaller. But she points out, you know, if that's of concern to you, you don't need to worry because the sentences that you're telling your reader, you're going to take those out and replace them with much fuller more description um, of what's actually happening in the the story. So those few sentences that you pull out where you've told your reader, you're going to replace them with sentences showing your reader. And not only will that maintain that you've got a decent length of book, but it's also going to add more detail, more life to your story um, and more depth to your characters as well. So I think I've covered this slightly. Um, just to recap, though, so the importance of showing, not telling, is that you're then letting your reader develop their own conclusions about the event and they can come to their own interpretation of what's going on rather than being told how to feel. Being allowed to come to their own conclusions means that they are drawn into the story more, they're more involved in the story, they care more about your character and they want to turn the page and find out what happens next. To help you do this, to help you make your manuscript better, she suggests going through it with the red pen and finding all those phrases and sentences where you've told the reader your character felt X, Y or Z. Then go back through, look at the underlines and say, do you need that? Is that sentence needed? If it is needed, how can you extrapolate it into a little moment where you're showing how your character is responding rather than telling your reader how your character is responding? And if it's not needed, you take it out because you've already done that job. And by using the words, my character felt X, Y and Z, you're just repeating yourself and there's no need to do it. It lessens the impact of your story. So I hope that makes some sense. <laughs> if you have any questions about it, please do come back to me. Um, I really want to get this point across because it's such an important thing. And um, it's always a relief to know that everybody goes through this. This is a skill that you're always going to be learning. It's not just something that beginners struggle with. But it is a concept that a lot of writers struggle with understanding. And so um, it's, it's always good to repeat it again and again and again and think about it, keep coming back to it so that it begins to sink in. And hopefully for all of us, it will become a natural process of our self-editing habit. All right. I hope that was useful. Come back to me with any thoughts that you've got. And if you'd like any more detail on it, if you think it needs a better explanation. Uh, but keep writing. Keep showing, stop telling. <laughs> All right, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, that's it for this week. I hope you found it useful. If you're interested in becoming a part of a safe and friendly community of like-minded writers who want to write their first novel, go to my Facebook group at emmadesi.com forward slash turning readers into writers. I can't wait to see you in there. You can find the show notes for this episode and all the others at emmadesi.com forward slash podcast. Thanks again for joining me and I can't wait to get to know you better soon.